Russian propaganda outlet compares Kashmir to Palestine. The work of Russian media outlets has come under increased scrutiny in the West during the last decade. In their portrayal of Ukrainian authorities, Russian official media has been accused of not only half-truths and distortions, but also outright lies, as well as engaging in influence operations to serve Moscow's geopolitical goals. At times, it appears that Western and Russian media reports are describing completely different places and situations, with the latter portraying what the former describes as a Russian-manufactured provocation in order to justify military intervention as a humanitarian crisis. Redfish Media, a digital video outlet linked to Russia, has also been scrutinized. Redfish Media posted a trailer on their social media pages for an upcoming documentary about Jammu and Kashmir. In their Twitter handle, they claimed, Indian Kashmir is fast becoming a settler colonial state. While Indian politicians call for the Israeli model in Kashmir, we spoke to separated families, evicted shepherds, and victims of militarization. The trailer soon invited a backlash on social media. Redfish tweeted, in response to the unwarranted controversy over our Kashmir documentary trailer, we assure our community that the full documentary is balanced and includes the perspectives of all stakeholders, including the BJP in Jammu Kashmir and Kashmiri activists. Redfish claimed it was granted exclusive access to parts of Kashmir, normally out of bounds to foreign journalists in 2021. The Western media's coverage of Kashmir is poor. Readers were given an incomplete and oversimplified tale of Jammu and Kashmir by the New York Times, Washington Post, NPR, CNN and BBC News. The Indian government's decision to abolish Articles 370 and 35A of the Indian Constitution, effectively terminating the state of Jammu and Kashmir's semi-autonomous status, and vowing to bring its governance and legal code in line with the rest of the country. Western media outlets are accused of being biased against India in their stories, which depict a one-sided, negative story while neglecting the situation's complexity. The BBC News, CNN, and The New York Times are among the most widely read news sources, according to the majority of readers. They were also the outlets most frequently charged with biased reporting. Because the majority of people throughout the world are unaware of the Kashmir issue, a reader, with no prior knowledge of the conflict, can conclude, based on the story, that India's actions were positive or negative. Most notably, despite publishing more than one comprehensive history of the Kashmir conflict, Western media sources omitted to highlight the ethnic cleansing of the Hindu Kashmiri Pandit community by Islamist terrorists in 1989, the indigenous Hindu population of Kashmir. They also overlooked the viewpoints of minority communities in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Minister of External Affairs, S. J. Shankar said, that although the government believed its moves in Jammu and Kashmir is India's internal business, it had sought to explain the issues to governments of different countries and make them understand what it was about. He also said it was a more difficult challenge with the media, especially the English-speaking liberal media in the West. Partly because they were ideological about Jammu and Kashmir and they had strong preset views about it.